So I'm at the location of Eugene, Eugene Crozier Memorial Day Nursery, uh, which is a historical landmark in Lake Como community. So we're gonna come over here today and see if we can interview uh, Miss Lynn Lampkin. See, you got a nice little, nice little gated area with plenty of, plenty of property inside of there. Nice little van. This is the facility. It's a nice facility, well kept. Eugene Crozier Memorial Day Nursery project of the Lake Como Community Center organization. Community owned. See, this is key right here. This is key. I need you guys to see. What that say? Community owned. Talk about staples in the community. Nice little gated facility. Nice facility. Got that Lake Como purple and <laughs> wait, 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 you ain't got no problem being on you got you don't wanna be on camera. You gotta be on camera, Miss Lee. Come on, be on camera, Miss Lee. How you doing? Being on camera. <laughs> you looking real cute, got your hair did and stuff. Yeah, I did. <laughs> <laughs> oh, how are you? You just got. This was the old steps to the house. Oh yeah. Back in the day. Right. And they put. Oh yeah, they just built over it. They built over it. The little, but that's gonna be a breeding ground for snakes. Wait a minute. <laughs> Wait a minute, Miss Lee. Yeah, I'm not saying they're under there. Right. But, but how do you know they're not? We're going into the owl. Yes. Oh, glory. He's ready to go. Nap time. 11.30 to 2 30. Thank you guys for tuning in. I'm Hurley Tarver. This is Lynn Lampkin. We're at Eugene Crozier Memorial State Nursery. What's the difference in the, in the nursery and the daycare? There isn't a difference. The terminology was nursery and not daycare. So now, 2020 is called daycare. You said that outside. I was just going to say it again. I can't remember what to say. So give me a brief synopsis of the history of this place. Okay. So in the beginning, this building actually was the Como Community Center. And then during... I, I believe 1957, um, they decided, Mr. Meyer Campbell, Mr. George Campbell, W.H. Wilburn, and um, a couple others, I can't remember their names, wanted a place for the single mothers to have for their children to go where they would be safe while they were at work. And so that's how basically the nursery was formed. This Mr. Campbell, Mr. George Campbell, wanting them, the mothers, to feel safe leaving their children somewhere. So that's how it began. He did not want to charge a lot of money for them to have to worry about paying for daycare or to, I don't even know if he called it daycare, child mm -hmm. care, and then having to work as well. With his memory in mind, we try to just make sure we charge enough to survive. Charge enough to survive. To survive, not make a profit. So how how is the business, or even if it's considered, it's probably not even it's considered. It's considered a business. Okay. It's actually considered a corporation, I found out. Oh, so it's not a not for profit. It's a for profit business now. Right, but we don't make a profit. Okay. So how is it sustained? So what happens is everything is paid through parent fees. Hmm. Everything. Really. Everything. So that's why it's so important to have an enrollment, a stable enrollment. We have volunteers. Um, I actually, I'm the director, but. Mm -hmm. I don't take salary. So you're the director? 
I'm the director now. And your job detail pretty much encompasses all of the uh, operational pieces, the employment, the maintenance and upkeep of the yes. facility, and you take no pay. Okay. So approximately how many hours a week do you put in at this place? I don't know. Um, <laughs> because, and let me say this, I started here, Mr. Campbell allowed me to start working here at 15 years old. 15. So I was 15, and um, I don't want to tell my age, but <laughs> I am now 50 years old, and I am still here because it's where I wanted to be. I've always yeah. wanted to do daycare. And so it's really not a job anyway. It's mm -hmm. what I desire to do, and it's my way of giving back. Right. So, um, again, what we do is we have the fees in place. We have donations, but basically it's um, the children's fees that pay for everything. So a lot of it is, is, is literally built on enrollment count. It's enrollment. So basically the, the parent fees are basically like the enrollment, whatever the fees are for them to enroll? Yes. Well, and weekly fees. Oh, weekly fees. Weekly fees. So, like, is it open to um, just the community? or no, is it open? it's open to everyone. But because we're housed in Como, people mm -hmm. tend to think only Como people can go, which is not true, and we have open enrollment anyone as well. What's the average cost? So, for a week, non-potty trained is $85. A week? A week. Potty trained. Lord, have mercy. <laughs> a week? Eight, what did I say? I said non-potty trained, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay, so non-potty trained is, I'm sorry, 95 a week. Uh-huh. Potty trained is 85 a week. What? If you do before and after school program, which looks like it's not going to happen this year, uh -huh. it's 65 per week. And then you have a $50 registration fee if you hadn't gone here before. If you're a reoccurring student, mm -hmm. your $50 is waived. So if you went here, it doesn't matter what year you went here and you bring your children, your $50 is waived. Really? So, so if like, like the homie, like Jeremy Drake, yeah. <laughs> and, and, and like his a, sister, yeah, yes. and, and and probably like a million more people that yes. grown folks now that I came through here. Yes. If they went here back in the day, yes. then their kids that go here now, fifty dollars be waived. Yes, man, that's all right. That's a welcome back home. Approximately how many? Um, so we're licensed for forty three. Okay. Okay. So since COVID nineteen. We do not have 43. Okay. Of course, we right. Don't. And I couldn't safely keep 43. Yes. And I and I have a mask on. She, we got masks. So we we doing the COVID thing. We just yes, we done the screening. No fever. No yeah. coughing. Yeah. Sanitized. Yeah. And, and, I don't know. And the rest of it. <laughs> and the rest of it. And the rest of it. It's not accredited yet. No, we're in the, we're actually we're in the final stages. So uh, we have been set back with COVID-19. Mm -hmm. However, we're looking at probably um, late August. Uh, there's a process. So we actually, for lack of a better word, say we filed in the end of August. Mm -hmm. And we have a year for them actually to come out. The accreditation allows us to bill ourselves as a preschool. Oh, that's no And that's what we want. Uh -huh. Because people, and this is something that bothers me, we are not babysitting. Right. We are teaching your children. Right. See, I'm glad you said and that. And so people are like, well, they play all day. Yes. Right. Because our theory, our philosophy is learn through play. Mm, that's so it. that's what we do. So yes, they're going to be playing. Mm -hmm. But you have to look at what they're playing with. Are they right. playing, you know, when they're playing with blocks, you've got to tell me what color block it is. How many blocks mm -hmm. do you have? Mm -hmm. And that way the child doesn't realize they're learning. Yeah. But they're learning. Interactive learning. Interactive learning. And the age range is between? 18 months and 12 years. 18 months and 12 years. Mm -hmm. Is there a specific like curriculum that you guys use from like? So we have a theme based. Okay. Monthly. Okay. So we go by uh, and we sit down uh, together and decide what we're going to do for the month. What we used to do is try to follow the same curriculum as the school, mm -hmm. but often the children need extra. So with us, maybe we're talking about numbers, mm -hmm. but they need more than one week to talk about numbers, so mm -hmm. we do that. We give them every opportunity to learn whatever they need at whatever stage they're at. 
leave no children behind. <laughs> <laughs> no child left no behind. Child left. Yeah, I do one of them. Somebody don't get left No back. child left behind. And what? especially now, um, it, it's important. Yeah. That we're there for the children. With where you guys are now, what do you see for the future of Eugene Culture? The future is bright. Yeah. I see great things on the horizon. Um, I'm excited. I, I really want it to be full functioning classroom mm -hmm. where if you want your child to be here, they can be here and learn just like they could at elementary school. Yeah. And move on. That's our legacy. Yes. <laughs> yes. Continue. You, you are. I mean, how many went to Crozier? Yeah. I, a lot of y'all watching this. <laughs> <laughs> came through Crozier. I know you did. <laughs> it don't just because you was at the bottom and the people at the top were going there. Some of y'all went to. <laughs> then. What's <laughs> the bottom? <laughs> How do you feel the community could be a help to the vision you guys have at Crozier? Well, you already doing it. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but I think, I, I really think that it has been a secret mm -hmm. that we are here and we are a part of the community. Right. A lot of people are like, oh, they're still open? Mm -hmm. And so I would like for everyone to know that we're still open and thriving and with your help we can continue to thrive. Don't send your child to the daycare because it has a computer. Because honestly, they're going to get that regardless. Right. But here, here is home, and they'll get that that sense of family. I like the involvement that we're starting to see, and I would like for it to continue. Um, not necessarily money, but your time. So that's what I would like to see. I love. Did I say it before? I love legacy. I love legacy. Hey. <laughs> Hey. I am ready for the to come do some work. <laughs> yes, yes, yeah. yes, yes. And Jeremy, I'll make that turkey sandwich. Wait too. a minute. <laughs> Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I think that was his favorite. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> they probably ate everything. You, know. <laughs> you know he'd be making the barbecue or nothing. Man. He got some, some pretty fine barbecue. I, 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 I can't say. I haven't had any. You don't have to bring some barbecue. Mm. He go, he gonna have his little home set up at the uh, oh. car wash Saturday. Okay, so I'm going free. Yes, yes, right. yes, oh, yes. There you go. Saturday, <laughs> <laughs> August eighth, two thousand and twenty. Come to the car wash. Come to the dip. <laughs> okay, right. Come to the dip. Car wash on Saturday from ten, 10 to, to four. God, the night. <laughs> from, ten, from ten to four. Come to the car wash. Support. Proceeds come in here to Eugene Crozier's to, um, we just want to get the community involved. This is not only a staple in the community, it's family, um, it's a place to bring your kids and feel safe and know that they're getting all of the essential things that they need to be functional and successful in life. It's a good environment. And what better way to support it? It's basically community, community funded to a certain extent. The cost of enrollment is beyond affordable. Um, and it contributes to the uh, sustainability of this establishment. Great place to support. Could use all of the volunteer work. If anyone is a plumber, anyone does carpentry, painter, lawn care. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever you do, you name it. <laughs> you can come do it here. <laughs> we need it. So bring it this way. Thank you guys for watching. Bye. Thank you for tuning in. I'm Hurley Tarver. This is Miss Lynn. Miss Lynn. <laughs> and I'm with the Legacy Group Como. Thank you for tuning in.